I think there's nothing wrong with the pursuit of material wealth. I just think it shouldn't be at the expense of your happiness and your peace. Peace being the ultimate success. Good afternoon and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klassen. This evening's shoot is in the absolutely gorgeous Bertrand Jazz Lounge. Thank you so much to Bertrand and his team for hosting us. It's an amazing place to come. This is definitely the place you want to be for live music, good people, and amazing entertainment. And without further ado, we all know him from our favorite show, Idols. He's also now the co-host of the new property game show, Proverb, the one and only, joins me live this week, Wednesday at 8 p.m. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Take care, this is a show you do not want to miss. We'll see you there. Hey, this is Proverb, and you're watching the first time home buyer show with ST Klassen. Good evening and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klassen. Thank you to everyone who tunes in every Wednesday night. If it's your first time, welcome. Please stay with us. We have amazing content coming to you every weekday this week. We've got Zaman Tunguakumalo with the Private Property Podcast. And of course, we've got Mbali. Yesterday was our 100th episode. That's the Farming Podcast. And Chad Vaviros travels around Johannesburg and Cape Town. We're looking at amazing houses. Chad Vaviros comes to you with the Home Shopper Show. That's every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. And of course, I come to your screens every Wednesday evening chatting to amazing guests where we share the journeys and the stories and the leaps of faith that we took to get into the property industry. That's every Wednesday evening. But without further ado, this evening, everything I'm doing now, I am under so much pressure because this evening I have an absolutely amazing guest. If you have not guessed it yet, or if you haven't seen on our social media pages, the one and only absolutely amazing man, Proverb himself. Please introduce the show. Oh, wow. You Cut. are so kind. Thank you for that <laughs> intro. So what is it? The first time home, home buyer, buyer show. Yes, show. we're live every right? Wednesday evening at well, 8 p.m. Go. No, you, I Indeed. can't do it. You need to do it. Indeed. <laughs> Listen, I can't follow what you have done. I'm just privileged <laughs> and happy to be here. Thank you so much for joining and for actually, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're a very busy man. And I know that we brought you here to share your property journey. Sure. Because, you know, I also come from an entertainment background and yeah. studied drama, mastered the art actually. And it is an intimidating, daunting, scary industry to be in. And I love, I read something uh, that you said that you cannot only trust that entertainment industry, you mm -hmm. need other kind of realms to, you know, put your finances, to make these investments. So before I even get to any of these questions, tell us a little bit about your own personal property journey. Right. So just to sort of uh, continue on your thought there, mm. I believe we need to always diversify, you know, uh, in everything we do, not just uh, investments, but we are mm. dynamic human beings. Our interests vary. Yeah. So why shouldn't our income streams vary as well? Why shouldn't our sort of lifestyles vary mm. as well? You know, so I think um, in terms of, uh, you know, my interests in property, it was of that very thinking okay. to say, you know, my interests extend beyond entertainment, but also it was born of uh, a need to not only diversify, but to have alternative income streams as well. Mm. And you're obviously slowly but surely building your property portfolio. Sure. And how, how has that journey been for you thus far? Yeah. It's been a very rewarding one. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because I actually got into property before I started learning about it. Oh, wow. You know, so I made plenty of mistakes along mm -hmm. the way. I still make lots of mistakes along the way. But what is most fruitful about the journey for me is how much I learn as I go. Mm. And also, you know, how many other people I get to meet who are also interested in property who I get to learn from, which yeah. is why when you send the invitation, yeah. I gladly took it because mm. I knew there's an opportunity to pick up some more gems right. and improve my own uh, property right. journey. Even just listening to you talk just before the show, you, I, I, I literally <laughs> see you light up at all these new facts you learn yeah. every day from different For people. Sure. And that's amazing. I mean, just being the host of the show, listening to personal stories and journeys yeah. that people share. I'm just like, 
Wow. And I love that you actually said um, you learn a lot every day, but yeah. you also learn about yourself. For sure. In this journey. So I don't even want to know about the mistakes you've made mm. in your property portfolio, but yeah. what have you learned about yourself during wow. your property journey? I, I have learned that um, I think I have a degree of grit. Mm. I have learned that I am calculated. And bear in mind, I'm substituting calculated because mm. the word I actually want to use is I'm a little bit of a coward. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. So uh, my appetite for failure isn't mm. where it should be. Okay. So because of that, I'm very calculated about the moves that I make mm. in my life, mm. but also in my journey in property, you know. So mm. I'm, I think thoroughly. I do a lot of research before I finally make a move. I consult a lot. I ask a lot. I get a lot of information. And this for me has, has made me discover mm. that I'm, I'm actually quite a a calculated person, I'm, I'm quite a reserved investor, mm. but this has served me well. Right. And I mean, you'd think that being in the entertainment industry, right, and going to auditions or doing right. whatever we do, we get rejected all the time. Of course. So you'd think that like failure and rejection is something we're used to. Sure. As people in the industry, but it's different yeah. when rejection and failure and your money is attached to it. Or 100%. investments that, yeah. I, I also think we should separate and differentiate uh -huh. failure and rejection. Mm, okay. I think, uh, I in my mind, I think rejection mm. is something that's uh, informed by an external force. Right. Whereas failure is something that, you know, you can self-sabotage by being ill-informed mm. and making a decision without having all adequate information. Yeah, you and know that's why I mean? it's so important to do the research. You're oh, so right. listen, I'm a big believer in books, in reading, mm. in doing short courses, in watching YouTube clips, in engaging on platforms like these, yeah. and watching this particular show. Uh, you know, you can never have too much information. True. Where would you like to see your property portfolio go and grow? Where, what's your end goal? You know, uh, the only reason that question is particularly interesting okay. is because you're asking me that now. Okay. So if you had asked me this question, say, two years ago, mm -hmm. I had a number mm -hmm. where I wanted to see my property portfolio. I wanted the magic and the sweet spot to be this because this is the kind of income I wanted to generate from it and I wanted to live off of it. But I'm kind of at a place where... Uh, you know, so I did a course in property. Yeah. I also did a course in uh, investment management. And from that course, I learned to not put all my eggs in this one basket mm -hmm. from an investment point of view. Mm -hmm. So my interests, even though are primarily in property, but I've also grown beyond property right. as well. So for now, I'm satisfied with where my portfolio is. Okay. And I just want to cast my net a little bit wider mm. from an investment point of view. I love that you said that, that you're satisfied. You, you're happy, you're content. With uh, where, for sure. Yeah. For sure. That's amazing. <laughs> I already, you know, we've had Sylvia on the show. Oh, right. Who, yeah, yeah. Who you, you know, co-host with, with the yes. Property Game Show. Yes, yes. And I literally um, saw a few episodes and literally at the end of every episode, the two of you do a lot of um, self-work. Right. You talk a lot about... Um, personal development. Yeah, personal development. Sure. That's the one. And so I want to, if possible, if we, can, if we can share some of your own personal development. Yeah, by all means. Oh, 100%. So it's interesting because personal development is a big thing that yeah. I'm on that journey right mm -hmm. now. So uh, both formally, informally, I'm really studying. I'm mm -hmm. doing a lot of self-empowerment. I've uh, registered with uh, Regenesis Business School, mm -hmm. doing a BBA right now. Uh, the long-term goal is to do an MBA. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it will take, but it doesn't matter. Uh, one <laughs> course at a time, I say. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, that's, uh, that's really important, man. And... Um, uh, I'm a late bloomer mm. in many respects, mm. you know, um, but I'm 40 years old and I'm only now, honestly, appreciating the value of knowledge, of information, of education. Yeah. Um, and so I'm sort of at the uh, closer to the middle end of my life, call it a midlife crisis, <laughs> and it's coming in the form of seeking information oh, and wow. personal uh, yeah. empowerment. That's the best form, I think. There you go. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> We're going to get into some of the questions uh, some of our viewers, followers have asked us. Right. Can I throw um, out the disclaimer? Sure. Please, please I think do. It's no, necessary. Please, do. please do. Please do. So, I am no property expert <laughs> by any stretch yeah. of the imagination. I'm mm -hmm. glad you mentioned Sylvia because she definitely yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, and also, 
um, there, there are many which I may not know. Right. But I'm hoping if somebody does, please share because I would then like to know. To know, yeah. And if you happen learn. to know, please teach me. Sure. As well. okay. So, you know, we've gotten some <laughs> questions from yeah. our followers at home. And of course, uh, Pro at the end of the show gets to choose a lucky winner walks away with 500 Rand cash. So, the first question, mm. right? Uh, the mm -hmm. name will pop up at the bottom of the screen, sure. so I'm not going to mention every single name. Um, Proverb mm. Is there a good season, do you think? to sell or purchase property? Oh, for sure, I think. Uh, and, and by season, I'm certainly hope, uh, hoping we're referring to like the economy, the timeline. I think when, uh, when the economy is uh, performing poorly, and fortunately ours is one such an economy where it right. goes up and down. I think if that's uh, on the back heels, I think that then becomes a buyer's market. Mm. And I think the inverse is also true where the economy is performing very well, then it becomes a seller's market. Right. So again, depending on uh, which investment strategy we're using, if it's to sort of buy and resell um, or to flip property, then that's the kind of thing you want to look out for. Mm. Then uh, also things like um, if an area is getting uh, you know, gentrified, um, yeah. then you definitely want to get in there and you happen to have this information early because then you know that your uh, investment is going to grow in value. Mm. Uh, so there's a possibility of great return there. And I, I think, um, you know, information is always your best tool. And anything that you know in advance, you can use to your advantage. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, those are... That's at least my initial thoughts Look from at that you. one. No, you got this. No, we're going to continue. Um, okay, so this is actually quite a... Yeah. I mean, I'd go for all three, but this okay. is the next question, right? right. <clears throat> what is best advisable mm -hmm. to buy land, build your own property, yeah. or just to buy a, a home that's already there, ready? Oh, wow. And I see mm. now why you would say you would go for yeah. all three. Because I don't actually think there's a right or a wrong answer, yeah. you know. Um, I think the circumstances, you know, are all dependent. For instance, if you have great relationship with a construction company or you run one yourself, then obviously buying land makes better sense. If there's uh, a dilapida dilapidated property right. and there's opportunity to True. add value, yep. then it makes sense to get one that's standing and, and as is. Yep. If your strategy is to get a tenant in there ASAP and you want it like, foot stewards, yeah. you don't want to do any kind of work, yep. then obviously a fully developed property where you just, yeah. you know, turnkey exactly. makes perfect sense as well. So the circumstances may be influenced, exactly. but there's all of those are correct. Yeah. I think um, the answer is what do you want? What do you want? Yeah. What do you in it for? What's yeah. your strategy? What's your end goal? Exactly. There you go. Love that. <laughs> we've got this. No, we, so far, we've so got good. This. Let's bring those questions. <laughs> okay. So this is um, uh, this is a first time home buyer question, All actually. Right. Mm -hmm. um, where should I go to get adequate information yeah. that will help me make the right decision before purchasing? Oh, sure. Listen, I think there's. Uh, opportunities to engage with the property investment mentors mm -hmm. there's multiple courses everywhere whether it's online i myself did a short course uh, with uh, may i mention the institution with yeah. UCT. uct yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know but i would say um you you're thinking the right way by looking to get informed before you make a decision right. so by all means right. um where you get it from is irrelevant mm. but it's about getting the information first mm. so do the research read up get books there's multiples of them mm. there's uh, all sorts of mentors there's online information there's youtube clips even right. um i would get all that information first and then make an informed decision is sylvia your mentor sylvia is uh sort of informally so mm -hmm. because I learned so much, much from, from her, her yeah. but having said that I think many people are my mentors I mm. think if you're not careful you might be my mentor too <laughs> because anyone I can learn from right you know uh, you just, yeah. yeah I sponge as much info as I can that's true yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna yeah. make you mine since you're answering all the questions correctly <laughs> um, so I like this as well uh -huh. um, we've got how has buying mm. and investing in property changed your perspective on finances? It's a two-part question, for so I'm sure. going to finish there yeah. and then carry on. Um, for me, it's given me a greater appreciation of the long-term goal versus mm. instant gratification. You know, um, I think if you have capital now, it looks lacquer in your bank account. Yeah. You know, but if you sort of invested in property, you enjoy rental income and you realize that it's a long term game that serves you even better. If yeah. anything, this a pandemic and outbreak has honestly 
uh, proven that theory to mm. the T. Yeah. You know, because there was a time the gig economy was completely shut down. We were getting no work. We weren't allowed yeah. to leave our homes. But to sit there mm. and enjoy passive income from your properties, yeah. for me, was such a blessing. Yeah. You know, so that's what it's taught me about, Amazing. about money. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like everyone, and I love how he said perspective on finances. For sure. How it's um, changed. Then he says, a car or a house first, and why? You know, it's, it's, it's relative, and I'm going to be careful with this answer. Okay. Um, obviously, the, you know, the long-term benefits of buying property first will always be greater. Yeah. However, yeah. if you need a car to help you right. generate this income, that's right. going to help you get property. Right. So, again, it's, uh, it's to the individual. Yeah. What, what do you need? What, what, what do you need? What but will of course, benefit uh, you right now? Property will always trump you know, um, a luxury item. Of course. If a car is that for you. <laughs> the beauty also, depending on how you skin this cat, is the property can help you buy this car. Of course, exactly. Uh, I think, you know, because this question is asked often, mm -hmm. a car or a house. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been so hesitant to get a car. Mm. Uh, not, you know, financially, I'm ready, I can afford it, but right. I'm just like, I don't need it. Working from home has made it, it's, I don't need it. And just to tie it back to the, 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 the statement I had made in the beginning where yeah. I said I had made many mistakes. Mm. I'm overly personal mm. with property. Oh, wow. So when I go to a viewing, mm -hmm. I always ask myself, would I live here? Right. And that's a mistake because right. you need to detach Mm. separate yourself mm. cannot be too precious mm. one investment strategy which is student accommodation mm -hmm. I have kept very far away from that because I convinced myself that students will throw parties in here they're gonna ruin it they're gonna yep. and you want to know a response to that yeah so what yeah do not get too attached, attached is the mistake I make okay do you understand? It's my mistake. And I've learned as I've engaged with other property investors right. to say, step out of it. A little bit, yeah. Stop make it, making it personal. Mm. It's, it's a business. Mm. It's an investment strategy. Do not get emotionally attached. Otherwise, you'll make ill-informed decisions. Are you able to fully do that, like now? Uh, I think I'm definitely getting there. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still somebody who is very particular mm. about the where, about mm. the why, yeah. about the, the market I'm trying to appeal to. Mm. But since learning it, I, I think I now go into uh, a viewing and I, I make a decision mm. knowing that this is my weakness. Right. So I try and be aware of it and combat it. Right. Oh. Property is actually quite emotional. Um, and it shouldn't be. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the biggest. That's your. That's my first issue. Wow. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. So we're moving on. We're still yeah halfway mm. there. Wow. Right. So what are the disadvantages? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cynthia didn't even ask about the advantages. Well. Yeah. What are the disadvantages of restructuring a property portfolio? The disadvantages. Mm. You know, uh, I, I, if I can say the overarching. Mm. big challenge with property generally in my mind is is cash flow right. because it's not something you can make liquid a, as quickly as you sometimes wish mm. sometimes if you've got a property and you've got this much value in there you're not always able to convert that into cash flow as quick as you want right. should you want to get mm. another property and so on for instance now you speak of liquidizing this one property mm. so that you can get into two yeah but the timeline yeah isn't necessarily up to you right you know and those for me are uh, present some of the the mm. challenges with the uh, with the property but otherwise if uh, it's to restructure a particular portfolio i imagine that probably means you want to leverage it against the bank or lend against it yeah. or something um i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing mm. for as long as you have a long-term strategy um, that's not going to, you know, choke you in the end. Right. Okay, so, Pro, mm. remember, uh, those were the first five. I'm going to carry on with the next five. And then you have to no choose problem. a winner, right? We're giving away 500 All right. And a special little surprise gift in there as well, mm -hmm. um, which is a signed book by Pro himself. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Pro, you know what? Actually, we were actually talking about this beautiful space we're in. And yeah. this is Bertrand Cafe for those watching the show. We were actually just talking about the aesthetics mm. and how we would actually do this to our own 
I do it to a space in my in my house, one yeah. of the spaces, maybe like the chill lounge or whatever. But just to remind the viewers, once again, this is Bertrand Cafe. And thank you to Bertrand for letting us shoot and, you know, partner with you. And hopefully we can come again soon. It's a beautiful space. Stunning. Thank you. Very stunning. Absolutely really. beautiful. And you know, with deco, yeah. I, I, I'm obsessed, man. Really? You know, I, I, I never know when to walk away. You know, you, there's always one extra piece, one item. Ooh, just that rug, <laughs> just that little thing, just the, you know, yeah. and I, I need to walk away, walk mm. away, walk away, walk mm. away. Never know when you know. to stop. Oh, but it is me. addictive, like property. <laughs> it's, it's, this whole thing it is, is addictive. It is. We're addicts. Um, we're moving to a little, uh, a few questions from Facebook now. So okay. thank you to everyone on Facebook who shared their questions. Remember, we are giving away 500 Rand and a little surprise gift, a book. The Book of Proverb actually signed by the mogul himself. Oof. <laughs> the title. Um, okay. Hey, Proverb. What are the top five things that you'd say are important that a person should bear in mind when starting to build their property portfolio? Sure. So I don't know if I can get to five. I'll sure. do my best. Please fill in the rest where sure. I fail. <laughs> uh, that it's a long-term game. Mm -hmm. There's about 15 investment strategies. Yeah. So pick one that works for you, for you. what mm -hmm. you want to do. Um, make use of a mentor. Yeah. And a mentor can also just be reading a book right. or signing up for a course or empower yourself. Right. Uh, build relationships, mm. relationships with uh, your bank, relationship with a financial advisor, relationship with uh, agencies and agents. Um, that will always serve you well. I'll leave you with the fifth one. Personal development. Personal development. I think development. it's very important, yeah, to, and also sharpen your skills of negotiation. Yeah. Research. Very Absolutely. important. Done. Got this. Okay. So we move on. Mm. Um, another question here, okay. Hey, Proverb. My question here is, what can a 20-year-old young man start do to mm -hmm. start his property investment yep. journey since unemployment is so high in our country? For sure. Um, again, and I hate to harbor on the same point, right. but I think if you take nothing else away from this conversation, it's this. Mm -hmm. uh, empower yourself. Mm. So get information, get knowledge, so that by the time you get into the business, you know exactly which way you want to skin it. Yeah. So empower yourself, try and uh, build a decent credit score so that by the time you penetrate the game, mm. you have all the sort of tools and all the weapons that you need to conquer. Yeah. The next question, actually, I love that this guy just before, you know, he's saying a 20 year old man, a very yeah. young man. Uh, the next question is, what is the appropriate age to start thinking of property? As soon as you can. As soon as you can start to think. Yeah. My think kids are already talking about property. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. What, are, what is the chats like? Well, so they come with me mm. to, you know, to auctions. They mm. come with me to viewings. Um, if we happen to own the property, they come with me to go yeah. and do the inspections every now and again. Yeah. So it's just to kind of get their mind and their understanding. Mm. Also, they know it's their inheritance, okay? Right. Uh, but so they're like, this is mine. We exactly. need to take care of it together. No, 100%. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just to get their yeah. mind thinking yeah. about, uh, you know, the long-term game. Mm, I like yeah. that. I like that. Involve them in the process from the... Absolutely. And that's what generational wealth is. That's because now you're teaching them how to do it as well. You said it. We go. Uh, last but not least, hi, Pro. My question is, cool. if you are self-employed, are you yeah. able to register for a bond or a house? 100%. Okay. Um, you just have harder work to do. So you mm. obviously have to ideally get uh, a bookkeeper, somebody who keeps your financials, because uh, chances are you don't get a, what's it called? I'm self-employed myself, by the way, so I don't know all these nine to five terms. Uh, you don't get a pay slip. Yes, yes, that's the one. <laughs> the one we get at the end of every month. Program. There you go. So uh, if you have a, a bookkeeper, mm. somebody who keeps your financials and the bookkeeping, you can use that um, you know, to submit to the bank. Right. And if you have any other income streams, you can sort of, mm. or contracts, mm. Uh, that you have at the time you can put all those together collate them and uh, submit right. them to, to a banker that you are you know receiving some sort of income, income. and consistently so right yeah we're gonna play a little game Oof, I yeah, love games. This. Let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to show you three houses that mm -hmm. we've been to and you have to guess the, the price range how much info do you give me like I'm gonna show you the entire where video. is it uh, what do I the properties do next that. to it cost? You know, um, no. when last was a property sold in that neighborhood wow, and for how much? So I need to give you all these clues. 
because this is how you arrive at knowing what to offer as that a buyer. So true. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. so these are things I would generally be asking anyway, but let's do our best. No, that's fine. <laughs> wow, Prabhu, putting me on the spot in my own show. Okay, uh, uh. this is the first video. Mm. Oh, it's a video. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go that's on. That's more, it even gives you a drone shot. Mm. So you'll see, you know, the suburbs and around it. Okay, cool. So what's interesting to note yeah. is depending on where the property is located, right. is a big determining factor of how much you should pay for it. Of course. Or what kind of offer you should put mm. in. So if it's... Uh, a coastal property for instance if it's in an estate for mm -hmm. instance depending on what is uh, close by is it close to amenities close to schools yeah. highways shops all of these things influence the, the price, ultimate yeah. price okay i like that <laughs> so let's get started this is, is your first property mm. okay so it's got a pool is that the three car garage Ooh, nice finishes inside good deco does it come finished or not? Do you know? <laughs> Very nice. It, mm. uh, I think can go for about because I saw a golf, right. a golf course there. Chances are it's a, it's a golfing estate. So um, I would offer anything from about eight bar on that one. Booyagasha. So so we're done with the game. Pro has won. Thank you. 8.7. Wow. Well done. Okay, no, we have I'm not playing more. anymore. Quit no, while no. you're still ahead. <laughs> okay, well done. Cool, well done. thank you. So so give me a little bit more. Like you said what helped you was the golf estate. Yeah, golf estate tells me that it's a it's a, it's in a secure estate. There's lots yeah. of space as well. I counted about uh, four or five bedrooms. I think the finishes and the materials used inside, the fact that it's a three car parking garage. Mm. Um, I didn't see any immediate neighbors there, so you enjoy plenty of space as well. Plus it's got uh, a pool that I saw, yeah. uh, a pajama lounge as well. Um, yeah, I think all of these things um, sort of determine more or less what you should offer, the offer right. that you should put in. Yeah. But m there's no real science. Mm. Um, you know, especially if you have limited information like mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it was just a lucky guess. And it was probably like Smeg Appliances. The video was too fast for me to see, but sure, probably. Sure. Okay, next one. Let's do our best. No, that looks like... Oh, I see. It's got an island this time around. Uh-huh. A lot smaller. And, and and the video's going faster as well. That's a second bedroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a wrap. Okay. So that looks more like a cluster kind of a situation. Yeah. So again, depending on what floor it's on, if it's a ground floor with a garden unit or something, or a corner even, mm. it can have a couple of hundred thousands over it. Um, was that two or three bedrooms? Can you at least tell me that? <laughs> it seemed, okay, even in the video, I think it's two. Two bedrooms, mm -hmm. okay. So but I know you're gonna under, you're gonna play it low. That's your only clue. Okay. So for something like that, uh, based on the size and the finishes that I saw, mm. uh, I would be in the ballpark of around two bar. Well done, you know what? <laughs> 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 I just, you know what? Yeah. You're just, you're, you're just Ooh, getting everything goodness. right. So, yes. okay, so we have one more. Mm. Ooh, eight now. Did you see that space, that floor plan? Mm -hmm. That's an office one. I saw a gym there too. Ooh, it's going so quickly. Yes, the day. Upstairs. Yeah. Oof. No, Is that inside? On. What? <laughs> that's no, all you that, get. no, that's that's gonna be a well priced property. It th the video is very quick. Yeah. But but it seemed very generous with space. Mm -hmm. Hey. So I, I think I think we are now getting into the big figures. I think we're getting into the big figures. I don't know. I would even go again, depending on where we're talking. Okay. But. Um, that's closer to like a 20, 25 Ooh. even. Okay, you can bring it down a little bit. You can, can one I? more try. No, I, 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 I remain and I'm not hiding behind it now. Okay. But I remain steadfast on the it depends where it is. Right. No, no, Dave. You know, because you can build 
a 10 bedroom mansion mm. but if it's in a lousy location yeah you're gonna get a of lousy course. price and the inverse is also true if you build a moderately decent place mm. in an exquisite location yeah. you can get top dollar for of it course. so when you see a nice place like that honestly this one falls squarely on where it is so mm. I, i'm gonna stick with my your 20 with my 20 i think it's in that sort of ballpark okay very good you're right it definitely is a higher ballpark yeah. it's 14 and a half 14 and a half yeah out of interest sake would you know where it is Benoni. Close no, they're Carnival City side. Uh, East Rand. East Rand. All right. Well, there you go. So oh. I'm off by a full on six bar. They would have scored on me as they a buyer. They would have. They would have. You. They would have. So yeah. listen, bro. Before yeah. you leave, sure. I know that we spent you know a lot of the time asking uh, the questions of our viewers and our followers at home. But right. I too sure. have some questions for you. Okay. Um, Shoot. Okay. So you know, I want to talk about this thing, success. Right. And um, we spoke a lot about personal development, and mm. I think the two come hand in hand. How you see success, how you become successful, is, I feel, really dependent on your own personal growth and personal development. And let me quote Albert Einstein. Mm. Um, you know, he says, try not to become a person of success, mm. but rather become a person of value. Mm -hmm. With that being said, what would you say are the ingredients to success? So this is obviously a very deeply personalized, mm. um, subjective perspective. Mm. But I, I consider success to be peace. Mm. And peace means if you are in command of your, the pace of your life, you're in command of uh, your time, you can invest it where you wish, mm. you know, you're not at the mercy of um, clocking in at any sort of given time you can attend everything that your kids wish you to yeah. sit and watch movies with them all day long mm. uh, travel wherever you want whenever you want uh, that kind of freedom and peace for me yeah. is uh, how I would define success um, a lot of what you've just defined a lot of uh, guests who have been with us in the past define generational wealth and financial freedom like that sure and I think a the most important thing that I've taken from that is just that time that you can spend with your loved ones yeah. um, whenever you want be at any event they want you to be at um, and to be at that point in your life you're so right this is success I like that I just never want to be hostage mm. to to the buck yeah and if if while I'm sitting here chatting to you yeah uh, my world is collapsing and that for me is the inverse of uh, success. Yeah. So how do you continue to nourish or to feed that mindset of success, that mind of peace? Sure. I think I just uh, prioritize myself. Yeah. I try and detach value to uh, all the sort of material things or things that will be keeping me mm. in the rat race. Um, and, I, and I just kind of replace and, and, and reposition where I put my value. Yeah. You know, so the reason I, I really I love to travel a lot with uh, my kids, especially, is because then you almost yanking yourself out of the system as often as you possibly can. Right. And whether you are instinctively going to your phone, going to your email, going to your but you are off the wheel. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that for me is the beginnings of true success. Mm. I asked a few p people th this question that I'm yeah. about to ask sure. you now, but I feel like I know what your answer is going to be. Mm. Um, and they defined, because um, I, I asked them, what does success mean to you? Yeah, yeah. And they were like, freedom. Yeah. And, I, you know, I couldn't put the two together because to be successful, in most cases, you're not free to get there. Mm. You know, and that's exactly what you're saying, to get away from that. Yeah. position of not being free you know this sure. whole nine to five kind of thing to be i i do may mm. i just mm. add something mm. because i i also know what it always sounds like when you give an answer like that it always sounds so oh you know you think you're so zen and you found right. your center and you just <laughs> align your righteous chakra. and your chakras and whatever yeah. and the truth is uh we all have aspirations of physical wealth yeah you know we all have our dream car yeah. our dream house yeah. our dream you know just material acquisitions mm. and there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting those and it doesn't mean 
that if that's how you define success, it's any inferior to somebody who says peace or freedom or of zen course, or whatever. Of but I think where the difference comes is when you're not hostage to those things. Yeah. So you should be able to achieve happiness, fulfillment, regardless and those mm. should be a bonus yeah. you know whether i drive a car or whether i am in a horse and carriage or i'm taking the bus mm. so all in all i think there's nothing wrong with the pursuit of material you know uh, wealth yeah i just think it shouldn't be at the expense of your happiness and yeah. your peace 100%. peace being the ultimate success yeah i like that Peace being the ultimate success. That might actually just be the title of this episode. Damn. Now, um, my final question to you. Mm. Again, thank you Bertrand Cafe for hosting us. Absolutely gorgeous venue over here. Jazz Lounge, if you're looking for good vibes, good people, live music, definitely the place to be. Pro, thank you so much to you. This is my final question, right? And if you fail, yeah. what makes you still worthy? Oh, that's a brilliant question. Um, and it connects very well to the previous thing mm. that I had just said. Mm. Because peace isn't the absence of challenges and difficulties. Yeah. Peace is ever present regardless of the challenges. So mm. your self-worth, your self-value, your perspective on life and your happiness yeah. shouldn't be affected by successes or failures, right. whatever that means. Right. You know, so however you define success, if you have peace, mm. you're able to navigate regardless. And Hence, I say focus on the peace. Exactly. And that's how you also maintain your self-worth. 100%. To remain worthy. Indeed. Um, let's use the middle camera. We're going to end the show together. Pro. Let's do it. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much to our viewers at home. As you know, we're live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Proverb, you've been amazing. Thank you so much. This has been <laughs> such a pleasure and a privilege. And I sincerely hope we can do it again soon. See you guys next week. You know the time. See you there.